Welcome back, everyone. Hope you've been enjoying those stoichiometry problems and trying to figure out what your limiting reactants are in the different equations that you've seen. I'm going to introduce to you today a method that you can use to possibly help you with the five flask phenomenon or any other problems that you have encountered in terms of trying to figure out what a limiting factor is or trying to figure out how much of a product you are going to make. And this method is called the Bill's Box Method, a method that I cannot claim as my own, but is a method that I picked up from another teacher, Mr. Ward, um, who he had picked up from his chemistry teacher at Williamston High School. So this method uh, I've introduced to other classes and they seem to like it. So just another way to look at things and can help you in terms of trying to figure out what a limiting reactant is or what a product is. What we're gonna take a look at is a particular demonstration here, um, very commonly done in chemistry classes. Some of you may have done this even in chemistry A, where you've taken, taken magnesium, a small piece of metal, magnesium, and you put it into hydrochloric acid. I know that when we did chemical reactions in chemistry A, we did this in a little test tube and then you lit a match and you heard a little pop. Well, in some classes, they also collect the gas that's produced from this reaction and you can gather it in a, a syringe or you could capture it in a balloon per, you know, just like the five flasks. Um, different ways you can collect the gas that's produced um, when you conduct this. So uh, we have here 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid in a two gram magnesium ribbon. And so the question is, what's gonna run out first? Am I gonna run out of hydrochloric acid or am I gonna run out of the magnesium in this reaction? And how, what product should I, am I trying to capture or trying to estimate how much I can make? Well, we can use Bill's box to do this. And let me show you what that is. So at the very top here, we have a chemical equation uh, that shows you that magnesium, which is a solid, reacts with hydrochloric acid and can form magnesium chloride, which is a liquid, and hydrogen gas. And that's the gas that we're trying to collect in this. And that's exactly what we're going to use when um, we're calculating this. And what we can see here is we have Bill's box, which is showing you um, the very top row when you create a Bill's box. And you can do this right in a notebook or any scrap piece of paper. Basically what I do is I draw these boxes to represent the different items that you are going to be, information that you're gonna be collecting. We have three rows and the very first row is the amount. And you can see that the box is under, for each one of these is listed there. Remember in this particular um, example of this demonstration, magnesium, we had two grams. So we had two grams of magnesium and we had 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. So we're gonna have the 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid here. So the next thing is, um, well, we're trying to figure out how much hydrogen gas is produced and that's what was in that syringe right there. So this is what we're chasing after right here is this hydrogen gas. So we're probably not gonna do much with that magnesium chloride um, because that hydrogen gas is what's gonna be filled in this container here we're gonna see which of the two substances do we run out with first. This graphic organizer here, like I said, can help you. We have a conversion factor here, and that's what goes in the second row in terms of how we're gonna to get to moles. Well, you learn from our other chemistry teachers, our wonderful chemistry teachers, how to convert different things. So most of you should know what a conversion factor is and how you can use those in those railroad tracks or whatever system you use to, to figure out how to convert something. Well, the conversion factor for magnesium is simply its atomic weight. And in that case, we get that right from the periodic table. And we know the atomic weight for magnesium is 24.31, and that's grams per mole. Uh, over here, in terms of a conversion factor for the hydrochloric acid, we have to use something that's called molarity. And molarity is simply moles per liter. So the strength of that hydrochloric acid in most cases is only one molar. It's a pretty weak acid. So we put 1.0 and a large M for molarity, and that's moles over liters. Now, since that is moles over liters, we have to convert this into liters. So to do that, you just simply take 100 milliliters, you divide it by 1,000, and if we do that, we're going to get 0.1 
liter here. So I'm just going to cancel that out. Again, that's 100 divided by 1,000. Now we can kind of use these factors together because this one is moles per liter. So if you think about that, moles per liter, moles per liter, okay, if we divide by, by this factor, we're going to get moles in this case here. So uh, when we divide and we're coming down here, that's what we're going to do is going down this, this particular thing. You're just simply dividing. So if we take the two grams and divide it by the 24.31, and that makes sense because one, you know, one mole of this stuff is 24.31, and we only have two grams of it, so it's going to be much less than a mole. If we do, do the division on that, we're going to get 0 0.082 moles of magnesium and you can see that follows right in this pathway you can see how that works if we come over here to the hydrochloric acid again molarity you may not have seen it but it's not that hard um, we're going to take the 0.1 liters and divide it by one and that's going to give us 0.1 mole okay so right away you might say well ah we have more hydrochloric acid well, do we? Well, let's take a look at how we're going to get to our product. So our moles of our product is where we use our mole ratios, and we can get those straight from the uh, chart up here. But if we look, magnesium and hydrogen, it's the coefficients are both one, so it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So in terms of what I'm going to make in terms of hydrogen gas from that magnesium, uh, when I do that, I would make exactly 0 0.082 mole of hydrogen gas with that magnesium. Now, if I take a look at this one, though, the conversion factor is going to be slightly different because we have two grams of this for every one gram of that. So there's really half of this over here in terms of that, and that's what we have to do. We have to divide by two if we're going to take it over to the hydrogen. So if we take this conversion factor and we bring it over here, and I'll bring it up here like that, and again, we're gonna divide or multiply by one half because of that two that's in front here, um, we're gonna find out that that's gonna give us 0 0.05 mole of hydrogen. Well, right away, we can see then, just by doing this simple, um, you know, the, these simple calculations that this is going to produce the least amount of hydrogen gas, and that would be the hydrochloric acid uh, is only going to give us 0.05 moles, whereas the um, magnesium would give us 0 0.082. So our limiting uh, reactant would be our, our hydrochloric acid here. So this is limiting, and we know that we would have excess um, metal that would still be sitting in that flask and would not be consumed totally. Well, how much gas would we produce then? Well, we have to take this 0 0.05 mole and we can figure out how much gas we would produce. We're going to use another conversion factor. The conversion factor of converting moles into liters is the, a basic standard, which is known as 22.4 liters of any given gas is equal to a mole. So if we multiply, and that's what happens when you go up this thing, you just simply multiply. If we multiply 0 0.05 moles by the 22.4, we're gonna get 1.12 liters, and in this case, this would be hydrogen gas that would be produced from that reaction. So you can see here, Bill's box is a pretty simple way of organizing yourself, and then you can just simply follow the paths around this um, to get whatever you need to get in terms of what you're trying to solve. There's different ways you can go. Um, if we were to go from hydrogen gas over to the uh, hydrochloric acid, let's say that somebody gave you a standard amount of gas, you could go down this, and then you could go across, and you would multiply by two um, because there, you need twice as much hydrochloric acid in this case. Um, going that other direction. So remember your conversion factors are down here. Uh, I didn't write that one down there, but remember it's just times one because it's a one-to-one -one relationship um, with the other one there. 
So Bill's Box can be very effective in terms of helping you understand how to solve some of these problems. And let's take a look at how you would set, set this up possibly for a five flasks type problem. In our five flasks, um, you basically have your acetic acid or vinegar, which is up here. You have your baking soda, which is here, uh, water and CO2. And remember that that's what you're trying to figure out right there uh, in terms of your product. And then you're trying to figure out which of these is limiting um, uh, and which is it the baking soda or is it the um, hydrochloric, I'm sorry, the vinegar that is limiting. Now you're given a standard amount of vinegar for all these and which is 70 milliliters. Remember though, when you're using that, you're gonna wanna have that in liters um, when you're doing any sort of calculations using the Bill's Box method that I'm showing here uh, or any conversion factor for that part, you're gonna wanna convert that into liters. And I've done that already right here by simply dividing the 70 by a thousand and you get 0 0.07 liters and every flask would have that much um, vinegar in it. it. The molarity or concentration of vinegar is the standard um, is around 0.8393 molarity. It's not that strong of an acid. And so that's a standard that you can use conversion factor for that. I didn't put the molecular weight of baking soda here, but that's something that you could pop in to this particular grid. And obviously I chose one of the masses of baking soda here. So um, you're lucky in this case, this is all one-to-one -one relationships. So it makes it pretty simple in terms of what you're trying to solve. Just have to get down to your moles here and figure out what these are. And then from your moles, you can just simply go over to your product and remember your conversion factor in this case is only gonna be one. All right, for both of these, pretty simple. Okay and a good way to do it. So um, hopefully this helps some of you. Um, so like I said, great, great method. A lot of students enjoy it. It's an easy way to set problems up and makes, and it can help um, sometimes for some of you that have struggled with how to set a problem up and you can kind of see where you're trying to go and what you're trying to get. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to one of the chemistry teachers. Good luck with those five flasks and figuring that out. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.